Welcome to the Crouch Ranch, you guys. It's Sid and Mike. We're just checking in. If you're watching us live right now, please comment with a one. If you're watching later after the live, comment with a two. If you're really confused about your life, comment with a three. And if you need to speak to somebody, press four. And an operator will assist you. No, I'm just kidding. They won't at all. Um, they anyway. <laughs> they never help. <laughs> so we thought we'd hop on today. We're going to start doing our lives most Sundays together. And I'm going to go live every Thursday. Because I know you guys have been asking about our live schedule. And we've been trying to stick to that as best we can. But, um, you know, sometimes things happen. But we're trying to get back into the swing of things. Um, and then we're going to try to release a... a a fancy video that's been edited and the about midweek. So Won't be fancy. It'll just be edited. Be edited. <laughs> a non live right. video. Yeah. So Calvin. Hello, hey sister. <laughs> I was uh Facebook messaging with Jen earlier. That's uh, Sinister's wife. Huh. Um anyway, so I like that we're doing this inside the house right now. Because so we can actually read the comments. I can read the comments. I know. The last couple lives we've done, we've done out on the patio. And we were both like, I can't see. We felt like 90-year-old people. So um, they don't. If you hit four, the people that answer, the operators that answer, will not speak English. Sorry about that. But there you go. Oh, hi, Jennifer. Hello. Anyway, so. Um, go and shoot coyotes. Yeah. That's always a good plan. Yeah. So yesterday was the big eight-year-old's birthday party, and I am still recovering. I feel like my brain is slightly scrambled. I feel very tired. The food was a hit. That was great. Um, that recipe that I did for the corn pork was bomb. How many people have had corn pork? If Raise you your hand. If you haven't, you need to. I don't see any hands raised. I don't either. But if you haven't tried corn pork, you're missing out. It was amazing. Um, it turned out way better than I ever could have. Yo, back, backwoods race got a got a hog. That's awesome. Or got a baby pig. Hopefully, it's not a hog yet. But that's cool. Right on, right on. Yes, the glare definitely messes things up, Calvin. It makes it hard to read your guys' comments. So we thought we'd just touch on a few things and then maybe chat with you guys for a minute. But uh, we're going to start doing a, a series, I think, um, on here for um, – for us to stay on task with our projects and we're going to take you along for the ride so it's going we're to be gonna our, have you guys help us stay on task right so it's going to be our hot project series right <laughs> and we're going to do you know try to do it in a way so that we can kind of follow through that you guys can kind of go along with us um i hate the term vlogging because i think it sounds uh pretentious personally but i think it sounds like I don't know, a little too dear diary to me. But anyway. Steven Stevens has had corned pork. Yes. And, and that doesn't excellent. surprise me because he's from Australia mm -hmm. and they eat, well, they eat Vegemite. So well, they eat anything. Yeah. And his name's so nice, you got to say it twice. Right. So <laughs> he must know what he's talking about. <laughs> so, um, yes, we've got some Bard Rocks too. Those are some of our, our older girls are uh, Bard Rocks. Um, and they're dwindling, some of them. Um, but anyway, um, so we're going to try to do this hot project series um and try to we're going to be <laughs> so one of the things we've talked about doing as our hot project and um, we got to see which one buys for um top spot here right so right now we have so many projects mm -hmm. this is the problem we have so many projects i work on a little bit of this and a little bit of this mike suffers from project add okay right. he's like oh look this needs to be resurrected over here and i need to put another piece of wood on this and build this thing and like oh look squirrel I'm gonna build this over here you know so he can't he doesn't and it gets about 90% of the way and then we've got to you know or something happens and we have to like reallocate funds and time into something else because something else happens right so or I just didn't want to work on that today and I was at Home Depot and I bought some plants and some dirt. Yeah, he got he gets inspired for certain things. So um <laughs> so the hot project series Yes. Hopefully, is going to help us stay on task because once we once we announce what the current hot project is, the fact that we have told you guys hopefully will keep us committed to it. Yes, it'll help keep us honest. It'll you guys will help keep us on track. So we're we're counting on you. Um, <laughs> so one of the things we talked about doing is um, I love birds. I think that's been made very clear in uh, if you've watched our channel. Um, I have kind of a 
a bird thing, um, specifically for weird birds. Um, but I settle for like chickens and turkeys, but then I got to get the weird ones. You know, I have to have some of those in there. Some of the less common ones, like the midget turkeys are not as nearly as common as like, you know, a, a broad breasted white or like some bronzes or whatever, you know? So, um, yeah, I got to have my weird birds. So we got to talking about building an aviary since I have the peacocks now. So we talked about doing an aviary, and then when we get an aviary, then you got to get some, you know, well, can I, birds well, can I in interject here? Yeah. So when we got the peacocks, <laughs> I was told by this one well, that we needed to build some sort of a structure that we could keep the peacocks in for a few months uh, so that they could um, get to know our property, meet the other birds through the fence, be comfortable here, know that we're going to feed them. Attach to their flock. Okay, right, you know, before we let yeah. them out, where they would then roam the property and be pretty peacocks that are basically useless, but she likes no, them. No, they do go after snakes and stuff and rodents. Yeah, no, they do help keep down. So we're having a chat last week out here, uh, and, I, and I built this very temporary peacock structure because it only needs to last a couple months, well, right? Mom Crouch is watching us. So <laughs> I, I got... Um, Oh, huh. Oh, so okay. um, so <laughs> I got this outside. very temporary structure built out of chain link panels that are six foot square. And I just, you know, bolt them together, brrr, put a, a lid on top of it using a pop up. And the wind came for the pop up lid and we lost a bird. And then we, I had to like sew it together and fix it yeah. and then and i'm like that's fine because it's not going to last that much longer anyway and she says no I, I i they need to be pinned up for like two to three years well here's the deal you gotta wait okay i've read some conflicting things but for what i want to do i want them to reach maturity so i can have them established in a nesting spot so i can make sure i get the eggs so i can have the babies so in order to make sure i get the babies i gotta have them settled in one spot and then after they've established like their nesting area and everything and I've done one round of that with them then I think I can let them out but they don't reach maturity until they're like two to three years old so now this pin that I really <laughs> crudely barely put together with literally bailing wire it was like yeah it, well it was like duct tape and chewing gum and like a spring from a fountain pen he like MacGyvered that peacock it now pen. needs to last a couple years yeah. so and it's very ugly it's really it's We've it's had a redneck white trash peacock pen. We've had people asking us, "Hey, do a little tour of, of the place, you know." And I'm not willing to do that until I clean up a few things that are just bad. And that peacock pen is the worst of it. Nice. Like yeah. I took like the worst of how things looked over there, and then I attempted to build something that actually trumped them and was even worse. And and I was successful yeah. in doing that. So, bottom line is. I have to build a new peacock pin, and I have to build it soon, okay? So then we started talking about this whole aviary thing and this whole concept of moving the peacocks into an actual aviary that we could put other things in, like ringneck pheasant and grouse and quail and finches and, finches and hummingbirds and, and, and cool and tropical plants. Oh Probably don't want to put no, lions and tigers no. and bears in there. But no. so we had this whole hot tub discussion, hot tub discussion about... This aviary. We have and a lot of great discussions in the hot tub. We do, actually. Yes. We come up with a lot of good we ideas. We plan everything out in there. Yeah. And so somehow that evolved to um, deciding to put the aviary where the current semi-permanent structure for the turkeys is. Right. Because it would border our swimming pool area. And you would actually be able to, from the swimming pool area, see into the aviary or from the aviary see into the swimming pool area depending right. on whether or not you're a bird or right a and that would be a great spot for the tropical plants because it gets a lot of shade back there and it's just it's an ideal spot for it it just fits the, the pool scene with it being a little bit more tropical and everything so that's pretty cool but then i gotta move my turkeys because that's where my turkeys are right now so then we were like okay so then we gotta build we gotta basically we're playing like Musical, musical birds. Yeah, we're playing musical poultry, musical fowl. Like, we're just going to be moving them around. So then I got to move. He's got to build a structure on this side behind where the current chicken coop is, which is going to be the the turkey structure. We'll say more permanent. Yeah, it's going to be, be a permanent that's turkey structure. Yeah, that's going to be a permanent turkey structure um, for them to be in. And um, so we're working on kind of designing that out and mapping that out. How we but I want to build that quickly. 
because I don't want to do any more repairs to the temporary peacock structure. Right. And I don't want to build another temporary structure. I'm kind of over building I know. It's, temporary it's always happens that way. It's like, okay, we, well, this happens, and now I need, you know, I need you to build me this, honey. And then he builds it, and it's like a quick, like, slap it together because I'm coming home with the animal now. And that just happens sometimes. Right. So, um, because I find that if I don't, then... She finds that if she just shows up with shit, then she yeah. can just say, oh, sorry, I thought you were on board, and I'm not going to, like, you know, tell her to take it back. Right. So then I'm going to go build some. Right. So it works out so perfectly. Let's I just break all my tools. You will not. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so that's the, I think that's the current lead for that um, hot project. But, uh, but before that, we have to finish the playhouse. It is like 90% of the way done. We have uh, one rock wall side to finish and partial paneling. I've got to finish some of the stuff on the inside. The, the floor edging tiles need to be finished and the molding needs to be put up. I have to measure for the curtain rods. I found the curtains that I want um, to put in there for her. Um, I already ordered the plate covers that are really cool. They're like leather with uh, metal studs to go over the, because um, it's about electricity. She's got a light in there and a plug-in. There's can lights. Yeah. We're going to do a tour of the, as soon as we're done, which we only have a few things left to do, we'll do like a little video tour of the playhouse. And, uh, yeah, and we'll post a video of that. Maybe we'll have Frankie be the, uh, the official tour guide. The tour guide. Yes. Right. Yes. So, anyway, so that's, that's been what kind of, so we hopefully we get that done, lickety split, and then we're going to start on this uh, musical bird project that we got going on, getting everybody moved around and settled so I can start. And I can do some of it simultaneously. Yes. I but do see, have, I think that's where we get in trouble. Right. Right. It sometimes. But, for instance... I've got to sink like one, two, three, four, five. I've got to sink like six four by fours in the ground. So I could come home after work, dig some post holes. Mm -hmm. Right? I don't have time to actually mix mud and start working on rock on the back of the playhouse after work, but I can come home and dig some post holes. Right. And then I come home from work the next day and I could set a four by four in there and dump a bag of sack creed in there and run a hose in it for a right. minute. So I can get some of that stuff done. <laughs> Bless, you. Bless me. Um, <laughs> hallelujah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Stephen, yes, the ducks we're going to hold off on. Ducks we're going to do once we finish the pond, which that will be another hot project later on down the road. We're not quite there yet. We have a list this long. We do. There's a long Of things that are going to be on list. that hot project list. Yeah. Yeah, basically. So, the flamingos are eventually, I will have flamingos eventually. I will, Lewis, yes. Um, but that's, that's, that's a discussion for another day, but that is going to happen, but we're not there yet. So we'll release that information once we get closer to it, I think. So we got, an, um, oh, this pillow, this Home Depot today. We went to Home Depot today <laughs> and, uh, to get a couple of boards that I need for a gardening project that I'm doing. And they had these flamingo pillows and she bought them all. Well, no, I, we were standing there, and I looked, and he, and, and I was like, oh, my gosh. And he, like, followed my gaze, because I have, like, flamingo dar. I can be anywhere. It doesn't matter where we are. If there's a flamingo within a 250-yard radius, it's like I I get, I zone in on it. So, yeah, yeah, it's pretty. Um, so, I literally just saw it, and I was like, this, and he's like, there were three of them, he's like, just get them, just get them, I can't, just get them, so I'm like, okay, but it's perfect, because when we first moved, there's a swing bench that was here that um, the material on it was falling apart. <laughs> this is a perfect example of me getting distracted. Yes. So, last weekend, I was out there working on the playhouse, Nate was over helping me, and I was looking at this swing that, by the way, she cleaned up, sanded, and painted, what, three years ago? No, not quite that long ago, but yeah, two. So and a half she did, and she did a good job, and nice. so the it frame nice. was in really good shape. Yeah. But then immediately after she did that, somebody was sitting on it at one of our pool parties. Before I had found a new cushion for it, and so the 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 what do you call the that? Cloth. The cloth that goes in between, like ripped, and then it basically fell apart. So there was nothing to attach that to anymore. And it was and the and the and the cloth was sewn around, around the frame so it was, yeah. kind of, it was permanent you know so it's been <laughs> sitting in the bushes 
back here up the edge of the pool for a while. I do, and, Josh. I have a problem. I'll admit it. I have a flamingo problem. And I was finally looking at this thing this last weekend, and I was looking, I was like, okay, how am I going to make this small enough to fit in the dumpster? I'm about to get the saws all out and a wrench, take some bolts loose, and finally get rid of this giant swing. And as I'm looking at it, I'm going, this thing's really well built. Mm -hmm. Like, all I got to do is put, like, a 2x4 there and a 2x4 there and put some slats on it, and it would be a bench. So what did I do? So that's what we did. So, and it's cool because we did, like, these wood, different wood panel things. So it's going to look like our fence does on the playhouse, too, where it's sort of, like, different colors of wood. So the plan is to get some cushions for it, but then I'm just going to put some throw pillows, these throw pillows, out there by the pool, and it's going to be perfect. So... I'm excited about that. But that's an example. I got distracted. I took time away from building the playhouse to uh, fall onto that project. And it happens daily out here. I yeah, get distracted. Okay. Uh, the dimensions, Michael, of the so, the... so the coop for the broilers is not really called a coop. It's called a brooder. The, the broilers go in the brooder until they're four weeks old and they're feathered out enough that they can go out and come off heat and go out into the field. Uh, and that is probably four by eh, six or seven. Mm -hmm. um, and we've got to divide it into two, almost four by four squares. So probably closer to seven. It's not quite eight feet, uh, but it's pretty good size. And then the coop itself, I don't remember how big that is. I, I no, didn't build it off of plans. I just went out and started building uh, But I could measure it out and, and give you some, uh, some dimensions someday. Uh, I probably won't, but... <laughs> one of these days it could if somebody really really wanted them right backwood says he wants you to take a look at uh his pig setup and tell him what you think yeah uh have you posted a video on it backwards because i'm assuming he would have had to to make I'll that go. statement okay yeah I'll <laughs> otherwise, go. I'll... otherwise he'd bend me over right now <laughs> yeah i'll go i'll go watch that tonight and, and let you know what i think pigs are easy man they really are they really are and as long as you can get in and out of there for their feed and hopefully you have a water system set up because that's really the best thing because um, they will knock their waters over. Um, yeah, don't try to feed them and uh, don't try to water them in those buckets that hang over them. Just come up with an automatic water. Yeah, they'll do usually, I mean, the nipple is the easiest thing and they pick it up pretty quick. So if you just have the nipple waters, that's the easiest thing, honestly is. Um, we went through quite the heck storm with the first pig trying to keep the water spilled during the summer because he'd want to knock them over make a mud bath and then, and then he had the water, water all drink. day and it was like dude you're killing me so i was out there every five minutes trying to refill his water until he got the water system built in so that was just a lot easier so yeah and that's going to get rebuilt at some point too the the pig pen uh, i'm on like my i think my third version of the pig pen right now mm -hmm. i finally put a semi permanent uh, roof over a portion of the pen with some tin that she found on Facebook or somewhere. <laughs> so somebody was giving away some, some corrugated uh, tin roofing. So she just went and picked it up. So I think it sat for about six months until I finally decided, Oh, I'll put that over the pig pen. Yeah. So something like that. part of it. So that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, um, basically, we just wanted to come online today and uh, let you guys know that we've committed to this this hot project idea. Um, and I guess the hot project that we should announce, right, is the turkey coop. Yeah, so it would be, yeah. So we have to finish Frankie's Playhouse. Uh, Which that, is so close. That has to happen, uh, but, the, but the, the first hot project video series is going to be the turkey coop, the turkey coop. Yep. yeah which is basically more of a run more of a penned in run uh and we haven't even designed it yet we basically came up with this idea bounced it back and forth yeah. rearranged our idea I where have things are going to be in my head but here's my problem i can picture how i want things i am terrible at communicating or drawing what i'm envisioning and that is where we get, tend to get into arguments. <laughs> not arguments. <laughs> not well. They're debates. Because I can't, like, I can't explain it to him in a way that makes sense to him, and I can't draw to save my life. 
So it basically comes down to trying to mentally teleport the images that are in my brain into his brain, and that never ends well. So um, I get nosebleed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> it is going to be right next to our chicken coop, and so we, we somehow wanted to match the theme with the you know the the color and everything, and we wanted to look. Nice. It's going to be permanent. This is going to be a permanent, as permanent a structure as the, as the chicken chicken coop uh, was intended to be when we built it. So, and I'm hoping to stop building temporary structures. Like that's my that's my goal. No more right. temporary structures. Yes. Like no think about it and build it the way you want it uh, the first time. Yeah, that's a, that's the plan. So, what else? Okay, so we covered the birthday party. Yesterday was a long day. I got up so early yesterday. I got up tuna fishing early yesterday. You did, which is my normal day, but for him was like yeah. ridiculous. I get up that early if there's a tuna boat involved yeah. or if we're going deer hunting or that's about it. So, uh, had to had to fire up the uh, the barrel house cooker yesterday morning, bright and early, mm -hmm. and, uh, and do these. So, Sid... Uh, we, we shot a whole video on it. We'll be putting that out sometime this week, but it was amazing. She brined these pork shoulders in this corned beef recipe. So, you know, thereby creating the corned pork and mm -hmm. I did a couple chickens in there. It was awesome. We had people over and, uh, yeah, it was, everybody was like, wow, this is so good. And it was great. It was, you know, traditional Irish fare and everybody loved it. And Frank had a great time. So it was, it was good. Um, what so we're going to call it an early night tonight, I believe. There'll probably be uh, maybe a whiskey and a jacuzzi. I don't even uh, have the energy to do that. I literally just want to sit on the couch and like watch something stupid. Like, literally, I think that's a Something stupid? Can we watch something that's not stupid? No, it has to be something stupid. What I about the that. movie we were talking about earlier today? Oh, whatever, the Star Trek. I don't want to watch something like that. I don't want to watch something else. I don't know what I don't know what I want to watch. It's like, you know, you where do you want to go eat, honey? I don't know anything you want. Okay, let's get Chinese. I don't want Chinese. <laughs> like that's <laughs> that's how She's gonna watch something like The Bachelor or Big Brother. No, because those aren't on right now. Oh. <laughs> Luckily for me. I do like my trash TV. It is my guilty pleasure. I usually watch that stuff when I'm working out in the morning and nobody else is up. I call it the Girls That Cry show. Yeah, no. Girls in Bikinis That Cry a lot. That's the summertime one. That's the paradise oh. one. I call, yeah, Frankie and I call that the Girls in Bikinis That Cry show. Because that's what they do. Right. <laughs> so. If you shop for turkey coops online, you can get lots of neat ideas. Well, that's true. I mean, I, you know, I do, I do go online and look at ideas before I build something. So, um, <laughs> crouch couch. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So small, are you talking about uh, laying hens? Or are you talking about meat chickens for your family to raise? If you're talking about laying hens, um, I would suggest starting out with, I don't know how much room you have, so that kind of depends. Um, and if you're gonna raise them from chicks or not, or if you're getting mature birds, all of that is kind of a factor as far as how you'd start it out. Um, but um, if you're doing laying hens, I would say, you know, start out with, if you can do a dozen, do a dozen. If you can't. Well, but you start out with three or four. Well, or depending on how much room you have, if you're building the coop. Always you're building asking it. the wrong person because no, 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 she no, will tell stop. you to start out with well, no, if a lot. He has, this, he has a family of six. So if he's wanting enough eggs, if he's doing laying hens to feed a family of six, three chickens is not going to do it. No, it's definitely not. So you'd need it. I would say, if you can start out, if you have the room, do 12, especially if you're getting chicks that are straight run because you run the odds of possibly getting a rooster in that bunch, you know. And then you get chicken soup. And then you get chicken soup. So um, so it depends. Um, if you're talking chicks have plenty of room, then I would do as many as you can if you're building that coop. Um, you know, if you can do, start out with 12, you can always add to your flock. Um, start out with 12. That's a good number. Um, because you're going to have, if, especially if you're doing, starting out as chicks, you're likely to lose one or two if you're getting, you know, day or two day old chicks. Um, there's a learning curve, um, you know, um, so, so I'd start out, I'd start out with a dozen. And research the breeds that do well in your area, wherever you right, are. Right, they're um, hot, cold, Yeah, whatever. some yeah. breeds are, are more hot uh, tolerant, heat tolerant, some breeds are more cold tolerant. Right. All breeds vary in the uh, number of eggs per year they lay, and that's usually how, when you look it up, it'll say, you know, this bird lays, you know, 280 eggs a year. That's a good, that's a good bird. 
You'll have another one that's a really pretty bird that your you know that your wife or your kid wants, but it lays like sixty five eggs a yeah, year. Like you don't want that bird or something. You know, yeah. it's cool to have one walking around your yard, but they're not going to be your biggest egg producer. And then you got to think about like you know. Do you want some colorful eggs in there, like an Easter egg or, or you know, so you got to think about that kind of stuff or an olive egg or, you know, um, those are actually decent producers too. But, um, you know, if you stick to those breeds that lay the, the highest number of eggs per year, you're going to have more eggs when the day's longer. Mm -hmm. um, and you can trick them too. In the summertime. You can trick them too um, in the winter with, you know, adding artificial light, making sure that you get up and feed them a little bit earlier. That will also keep them laying more productively during those colder months as well. Um, <laughs> Steven's commenting on the jack bottles. Oh, yeah. I've been I collecting know. those because it's I was thinking about good. making lights, lamps, or something for the fence, lining a fence post with them, but uh, it's another project. See, I don't I don't think I'm ever going to do that. I'm probably going to throw those, and now that you've called them out, I'm probably going to throw them away. All the empty ones, anyway. Anybody go. want a bunch of empty Jack Daniels bottles? I'll make more. He will <laughs> make more. We'll probably start making more tonight on that, I imagine. All right, well, we've taken up probably enough of your Sunday. You right. need to go praise Jesus and pass the ammunition right now, I right. imagine. Just the kidding. Ammunition? <laughs> yes. You don't know? Okay, they know. You don't know. I don't. Is it a movie? Oh, my God. You grew up in, like, the Baptist churches, and you don't know that? She knows all the movies. Oh, my God. It's not about a movie. Anyway. Whatever. Um, oh. <laughs> you're welcome, small. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, anyway. Where was I? See, this is why this you're passing so ammunition. From yesterday. Anyway, yes, because we've taken up too much of your Sunday. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> no, I love the comments lately, though, about, like, accusing us of not being good Christians. We're not. So it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's not. We're, we're not even. So it's like, and I, I don't want, the other one I love is the ones that say how, God-fearing children do not eat pork. I get that comment a lot, too. And I'm like, well, you know, not everybody feels that way, that you shouldn't eat pork. Right. And then they go on their tangent. Right, because um, a lot of people love bacon. So, anyway. Whatever. So, um, there's still a little bit of daylight left. I'm going to go out and dig a couple of holes and plant a lemon and a lime tree. And um, I'll, I'll leave you with this. If you buy a house and you move into that house, the very first thing that you need to do. Mike's words of winsome. Before you have the locks changed, before you like. Before, before you hang you, the first picture or open the first box, Mike's wants you. Before you do anything. Anything. You buy a lemon tree and a lime tree and you plant them in the ground. Okay. I promise you that you will not regret doing that. Three years ago. I did not buy a lemon or a lime tree and plant them in the ground. And here I am three years later. I should have lemon and lime trees that are like three years old that are making lemons and limes, right? But I don't. Instead, I have one gallon lemon and lime trees that are this tall that I'm finally going to plant today. And eventually I'll have lemon and lime trees. Yes. And then so. we can have lemon and lime spread. Plant your lemon and lime trees as soon as you buy your property. First thing. You're very adamant about that. I am now. The faster that you have those, the sooner you can make margaritas and limoncello. So. I don't even know what limoncello is. Okay. She we says a lot of things anymore. that I don't know. Yeah, we can't be friends anymore. <laughs> I don't even know. Anyway, so on that note, I will see you guys on Thursday to go live. I don't know what time on Thursday because, um, well, because I just don't know. So, because that's like days away. Yeah, so it's it's a mystery. I don't know. It's a mystery. Some that's people have a really strict so, schedule of when they go live, and I commend them. I don't even I'll know get there. Doing. I'll get there. It's just I'm not there yet. Um, so make sure you hit that like. My phone is somebody's phone is going crazy over here. Um, I hear the buzz. It's gotta be yours. I don't have any friends. No, this is true. Yeah. Um, make sure you hit that like button, you guys. Make sure you click the bell to get the notifications for when we do go live and post new material. And make sure you share the video and comment on the video and tell your friends to watch and comment and share and subscribe. And we have Twitter now. I. Oh, yeah, I tweet. Like and we have Patreon. Phone. We have, oh, yes, the Patreon. So we moved to the hog videos, uh, the hog slaughtering videos to the Patreon. I am going to be working on opening up an Instagram because. Uh, because of that there I did we did mention that to them we have the 
the Twitter and we've got the Facebook page. So make sure you're liked our Facebook page. Make sure you're following us on Twitter because you can't follow us on Facebook without liking us or vice versa. But you can't Confusing. friend us on Twitter. You have to like us or follow I dig us. Holes. I don't know. She does the social media. I don't, and I don't really. Yeah. So anyway, so whatever. Do that. <laughs> right? And that's it. You didn't miss it. Nailbender, Joe, we're we're here. We're here. You For like a minute. Oh, you can watch it. Okay. Nailbender. Later. You missed it. Yep. You're so mean. Okay. Anyway, guys, thanks for checking out the video here and hanging out with us for the last 30 minutes. This was a lot longer than we planned to sit here and jabber. Yeah, I was going to be on for like 10 minutes. He talks and then, yeah. So, all right. Oh, your mom wants the bottles. <laughs> all right. Oh, okay. I'll figure out. I'll, well, let me look into how much. Look, if it costs more to ship them than it costs to buy a bottle of Jack, I don't know about that, but that I'll look into it. Sense. All right, there we go. It is. You're right, Calvin. All right, guys. Take care. Have a great rest of your Sunday. Enjoy the rest of your St. Patty's Day weekend. And uh, may all of your rainbows have pops of gold at the end. I don't know. I just said that. I'm hitting stop now.